Hello, friends, and welcome to Sleep Tight Stories. This story is about a little girl who is very excited for Christmas. She is hanging her stocking by the fireplace and wishing she could see Santa. As she is about to say her wish out loud, she hears a little voice which says, What do you wish? And she tells the little voice. The little voice tells her to put on some shoes and grab the light. And off she goes. Will she get to see Santa? Little Girl's Christmas It was Christmas Eve, and Little Girl had just hung up her stocking by the fireplace, right where it would be all ready for Santa when he slipped down the chimney. She knew he was coming because, well, because it was Christmas Eve, and because he always had come to leave gifts for her on all the other Christmas Eves that she could remember, and because she had seen his pictures everywhere downtown that afternoon when she was out with Mother. Still, she wasn't satisfied. Way down in her heart, she was a little uncertain, you see. When you have never really and truly seen a person with your own very own eyes, It's hard to feel as if you exactly believe in them, even though that person always has left beautiful gifts for you every time he has come. Oh, he'll come, said little girl. I just know he will be here before morning, but somehow I wish. Well, what do you wish? said a tiny voice close by her, so close that little girl fairly jumped when she heard it. Why, I wish I could see Santa myself. I'd just like to go and see his house and his workshop and ride in his sleigh and meet Mrs. Claus. It would be such fun. And then I'd know for sure. Why don't you go then? said Tiny Voice. It's easy enough. Just try on these shoes and take this light in your hand and you'll find your way all right. So Little Girl looked down on the hearth and there were two cunning little shoes side by side and a little spark of light close to them just as if they were all made out of one of the glowing coals of the wood fire. Such cunning shoes as they were, little girl could hardly wait to pull off her slippers and try them on. They looked as if they were too small, but they weren't. They fit exactly right. And just as little girl had put them both on, and had taken the light in her hand, along came a little breath of wind, and away she went up the chimney, along with ever so many other little sparks, past the soot fairies and out into the open air, where Jack Frost and the star beams were all busy at work making the world look pretty for Christmas. Away went little girl, two shoes, bright light, and all. Higher and higher, until she looked like a wee bit of a star up in the sky. It was the funniest thing, but she seemed to know the way perfectly and didn't have to stop to make inquiries anywhere. You see... It was a straight road all the way. And when one doesn't have to think about turning to the right or the left, 
it makes things very much easier. Pretty soon, little girl noticed that there was a bright light all around her. Oh, a very bright light. And right away, something down in her heart began to make her feel very happy indeed. She didn't know that the Christmas spirits and the little Christmas fairies were all around her and even right inside her because she couldn't see a single one of them. Even though her eyes were very bright and could usually see a great deal. But that was just it, and little girl felt as if she wanted to laugh and sing and be glad. It made her remember the little boy who lived next door, who was not feeling well. And she said to herself that she would carry to him one of her picture books in the morning, so that they could have something to be happy together about. Then, when the bright light all around her had grown very, very much brighter, little girl saw a path right in front of her, all straight and trim, leading up a hill to a big, big house with ever and ever so many windows in it. When she had gone just a bit nearer, she saw candles in every window, red and green and yellow ones, and every one burning brightly. So little girl knew right away that these were Christmas candles to light her on her journey and make the way clear for her. And something told her that this was Santa's house and that pretty soon, she would perhaps see Santa himself. Just as she neared the steps, and before she could possibly have had time to ring the bell, the door opened. Opened by itself, as wide as could be. And there stood, not Santa himself, don't think it, but a funny little man with slender little legs and a roly-poly stomach, which shook every now and then when he laughed. You would have known right away, just as little girl knew, that he was a very happy little man. And you would have guessed right away, too, that the reason he was so roly-poly was because he laughed and chuckled and smiled all the time. Quick as a wink, he pulled off his little peaked red cap, smiled the broadest kind of smile, and said, Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Come in! Come in! So in went little girl, holding tight to the little man's hand. And when she was really inside, there was the jolliest, reddest fire all glowing and snapping. And there were Little Man and all his brothers and sisters, who said their names were Merry Christmas and Good Cheer and ever so many other jolly-sounding things. And there were such a lot of them that Little Girl just knew she never could count them, no matter how long she tried. All around her were bundles and boxes and piles of toys and games and clothes and fruit. And Little Girl knew that these were all ready and waiting to be loaded into Santa's big sleigh for his reindeer to whirl them away over cloud tops and snow drifts to the little people down below who had left their stockings all ready for him. Pretty soon, all the little good cheer brothers began to hustle and bustle 
and carry out the bundles as fast as they could to the steps, where little girl could hear the jingling bells and the stamping of hooves. So little girl picked up some bundles and skipped along too, or she wanted to help a bit herself. It's no fun whatever at Christmas, unless you can help, you know. And there in the yard stood the biggest sleigh that little girl had ever seen. And the reindeer were all stamping and prancing and jingling the bells on their harnesses because they were so eager to be on their way to the earth once more. She could hardly wait for Santa to come. And just as she had began to wonder where he was, the door opened again, and out came a whole forest of Christmas trees. At least it looked just as if a whole forest had started out for a walk somewhere. But a second glance showed little girl that there were thousands of Christmas sprites and that each one carried a tree or a big Christmas wreath on their back. Behind them all, she could hear someone laughing loudly and talking in a big, jovial voice that sounded as if he were good friends with the whole world. And straight away, she knew that Santa himself was coming. Little girl's heart went pit-a-pat for a minute while she wondered if Santa would notice her. But she didn't have to wonder long, for he spied her at once and said, Bless my soul! Who's this, and where did you come from? Little girl thought perhaps she might be afraid to answer him, but she wasn't one bit afraid. You see, he had such a kind little twinkle in his eyes that she felt happy right away as she replied, Oh, I'm little girl, and I wanted so much to see Santa that I just came, and here I am. Ho, 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 laughed Santa. And here you are. Wanted to see Santa, did you? And so you came. Now that's very nice. And it's too bad I'm in such a hurry. Or we should like nothing better than to show you about and give you a real good time. But you see, it is quarter to twelve now, and I must be on my way at once else I'll never reach that first chimney top by midnight. I'd call Mrs. Claus and ask her to get you some supper, but she is busy finishing doll's clothes, which must be done before morning, and I guess we'd better not bother her. Is there anything that you would like, little girl? And good old Santa put his big warm hand on little girl's curls and she felt its warmth and kindness clear down to her very heart. You see, that even though Santa was in such a great hurry, he wasn't too busy to stop and make someone happy for a minute, even if it was someone no bigger than Little Girl. So she smiled back into Santa's face and said, Oh, Santa, if I could only ride down to earth with you behind those splendid reindeer, I'd love to go. Won't you please take me? I'm so small that I won't take up much room on the seat, and I will keep very still and not bother one bit. Then Santa laughed such a laugh, big and loud and rollicking, and he said, wants a ride, does she? Well, well, shall we take her little elves? Shall we take her little fairies? Shall we take her good reindeer? And all the little elves hopped and skipped and brought little girl a sprig of holly. 
and all the little fairies bowed and smiled and brought her a bit of mistletoe. And all the good reindeer jingled their bells loudly, which meant, oh yes, let's take her. She's a small little girl, let her ride. And before little girl could even think, she found herself all tucked up in the big fur robes beside Santa. And away they went, right out into the air, over the clouds, through the Milky Way, and right under the very handle on the Big Dipper. On, on, toward the Earthland, whose lights little girl began to see twinkling away down below her. Soon she felt the runners scrape upon something, and she knew they must be on someone's roof, and that Santa would slip down someone's chimney in a minute. How she wanted to go, too. You see, if you had never been down a chimney and see Santa fill up the stockings, you would want to go quite as much as little girl did, now wouldn't you? So, just as little girl was wishing as hard as ever she could wish, she heard a tiny voice say, Hold tight to his arm, hold tight to his arm. So she held Santa's arm tight and close, and he shouldered his pack, never thinking that it was heavier than usual. And with a bound and a slide, there they were. Santa, little girl, pack and all, right in the middle of a room where there was a fireplace and stockings, all hung up for Santa to fill. Just then, Santa noticed little girl. He had forgotten all about her for a minute, and he was very much surprised to find that she had come too. Bless my soul, he said. Where did you come from, little girl? And how in the world can we both get back up that chimney again? It's easy enough to slide down, but it's quite another matter to get up again. And Santa looked worried. But little girl was beginning to feel very tired by this time, for she had had a very exciting evening. So she said, Oh, never mind me, Santa. I've had such a good time, and I'd just as soon stay here a while as not. I believe I'll curl up on this hearth rug a few minutes and have a little nap, for it looks as warm and cozy as our own hearth rug at home. And why, it is our own hearth, and it's my own nursery, for there is Teddy Bear in his chair where I leave him every night. And there's Bunny Cat curled up on his cushion in the corner. And little girl turned to thank Santa and say goodbye to him. But either he had gone very quickly or else she had fallen asleep very quickly. She never could tell which. For the next thing she knew, Daddy was holding her in his arms and was saying, What is my little girl doing here? She must go to bed, for it's Christmas Eve, and Santa won't come if he thinks there are any little folks about. But little girl knew better than that, and when she began to tell him all about it, and how the Christmas fairies had welcomed her, and how Santa had given her such a fine ride, Daddy laughed and laughed and said, You've been dreaming, little girl. You've been dreaming. But little girl knew better than that, too. For there on the hearth was the little black coal, which had given her two shoes and bright light. And tight in her hand, she held a holly berry, which one of the Christmas sprites had placed there. More than all that, there she was on the hearth rug herself, just as Santa had left her. And that 
was the best proof of all. And that's the end of our story. Good night. Sleep tight. Sleep tight.